I ain't touched them, love honest. I ain't touched them. Hey up Ravers, uh, we've had a request this week from Sam who wanted me to review some heist movies. Now I love a good heist movie mate, where a gang executes an ingenious heist against all the ants. Uh, I think they're thrilling if they're done well, but for them to be done well they need to include a few key ingredients. Now first up for me, part of you has to hope that the gang gets away with it. Invariably, the person that they're robbing up is an absolute arsehole. Just straight away, you don't have any sympathy for the victim. He used his position with the Nazis to enrich himself while all around him people were being stripped of everything they owned. You see, it's fair game to rob a Nazi, ain't it? But I find myself turning a blind eye to some of the morally questionable stuff what the gang does during the film. Because I want them to get away with it. You know, they might beat some people up or terrorise an obidi or something like that. But you just sort of let it go, don't you? The lads in the Italian job here, chucking the cars out of the coach. I mean, yeah, the environmental impact's probably not great, but, I mean, what harm are they doing, really? Point. Mind you, just imagine the damage if the coach had gone off the edge, because uh, it's famous for that cliffhanger ending, isn't it? And some folk blame the driver uh, for, for not taking care, going around the corners. But for me, I blame the passengers, uh, you know, all getting bared up and dicking about, distracting the driver. If it were me, uh, I'd have done what I used to do with Dean and Maxine when we were on a car journey, uh, and they were arsing about in the back. I pull over, take the top chumps and the opal fruits off them, and give them a round of f uh, Anyway, where was I? Yeah, in loads of heist movies, the gang leader uh, is played by a really charismatic actor. So even though they've got poor morals and ethics, you still find yourself rooting for them. But also, another common ingredient is that they'll have an equally charismatic actor playing the copper who's hunting them down trying to catch them. Chris, you got up. Greatest. So if it's done well, you find yourself in a quandary about who you want to come out on top, you know, whether it's the criminal or the copper. And perhaps the most famous example is Heat, where you have Pacino as the copper and De Niro as the gang leader. And it was the first time the two actors had ever been on screen at the same time together. And the chemistry were evident in this iconic scene in the diner where they meet face to face. You know, there's very few other examples where two heavyweights come together and there's such a palpable sense of tension and electricity in the air. You know, we're sitting here, you and I, like a couple of regular fellas, but now we've been face to face. If I'm there and I've got to put you away, brother, you are going down. There's your flip side to that coin. What if you do got me boxed in? And now I've got to put you down. Because no matter what, you will not get in my way. We've been face to face, yeah. But I will not hesitate. Not for a second. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Any road, what are you having? Uh, I think I'll have the blueberry pancake, please, eh, Mongo? Thank you. Oh, good choice, yeah. Another vital ingredient to a good ice movie is the disguises. Yeah, sometimes I think the gang spend more time planning their disguises than they do planning the heist. We do it by the numbers. Hats. Glasses. Does the gang leader get final say on the disguises? Uh, or is it a democratic decision? Oh, what, what do you fancy wearing this week? Oh, I thought we'd dress up as skeletons today. Oh, really? I was hoping we'd wear the nun outfits again today. Some disguises are better than others. I mean, these blokes, yeah, they look pretty sharp in their suits with the shades on. 
but you can still identify the face. So what's the point of that? And that makes the idea of giving them fake names even more pointless. Here are your names. Mr. Brown, Mr. White, Mr. Blonde, Mr. Blue, Mr. Orange, Mr. Pink. And that idea ain't even original. Quentin Tarantino has written that off from checking the problem one, two, three. What do you want, Mr. Green? Is everything okay? Will you go back and sit down? I do not want Mr. Gray and Mr. Brown alone with the rest of the passengers. Why don't you trust them? Yes, I trust Mr. Brown. I do not trust Mr. Gray. I think that Mr. Gray is an enormous, arrogant pain in the arse who could turn out to be trouble. I also think that he is mad. And in it, the idea of a loose cannon psychopath off it, and all. Uh, he tends to do that quite a lot, the Quentin Tarantino. Some folk argue that Quentin Tarantino, uh, or as the Americans call him, Quentin Tarantino, uh, likes to pay homage to classic movies. Whereas in my book, he's just ripping them off. But they do look visually very impressive to Tarantino's films. Yes, he might have nicked the yellow Jim Jams from Bruce Lee, but it is quite a stylish look to rip off, ain't it? Crikey, you can hear why he didn't try and rip the sound off Bruce Lee. What noises is he making there? He sounds like a chimp having his knackers sawn off. And is it me? Or are them things that they're waving around the least efficient weapons you can imagine? They're hardly hitting each other with them, they're just waving them around loads. It'd be better off with an egg whisk. Point proven. He's given up on the weapon and just kicked him in his face. Anyway, I'd have lost my train of thought again. Uh, ah yes, Quentin Tarantino, uh, which leads me on to my final essential ingredient for a good ice movie, a funky soundtrack. Yeah, yeah proper funky soundtrack really gets me in the mood for an ice movie. But I think the funkiest soundtrack is gotta to go to Ocean's Eleven, ain't it? It's so cool. Yeah, Ocean's Eleven, uh, where George Clooney is Ocean, the gang leader. And one of the reasons the film is so cool is because he recruits a load of Hollywood A-list stars to help him with the ice and swan around with the funky soundtrack in the background. You've got Oscar winner Brad Pitt. Yeah. Oscar nominee Matt Damon. Oh, yeah. Oscar nominee Elliot Gould. Get in the goddamn house. Oscar nominee Don Cheagle. That poxy demo crew haven't used the coaxialins to back the main line, have they? What the bloody hell is that? Oh, God, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, what was he doing? It sounds like Frank Spencer. Let's be honest, if you're going to try and develop a cool persona, uh, Frank Spencer ain't really the one to go for, is he? It's all right, Betty. You see? Uh, I wonder if it works any better the other way around. They've only nosed up the mainframe couplet, nosed it right up. Mm, no. Yeah, let's get back to the funky harsh movie soundtrack. Uh, oof, that can't have come cheap, can it? A Swatch van. In fact, now I think about it, they must have spent quite a lot of money on this heist. I mean, going a suite at the Bellagio can't have been cheap, for starters. Plus they had all their outfits and disguises, what they were wearing. And all the flashy technology and equipment, what they were using, and all that can't have come cheap. Yeah, they had a remote control van, how much did that cost? And they had to build an entire replica vault. That must have cost a bloody fortune. So they must have been absolutely loaded. And they never even needed to rob the place. Or a bunch of pillows. Right, so what's my number one heist movie? Well, uh, if I had to recommend one, I think I'd go for checking a pillow one, two, three. 
Uh, yeah, uh, characterisations in it are great. Loads of good characters in it. Robert Shaw's brilliant. Walter Matthau's great. Really good watch. Loads of funny bits in it and all. You, you what? What do you mean they changed the heist movie? It is, isn't it? Well, what's the definition of a heist movie then? So it turns out I don't even know what a heist movie is. And checking the Pelham 1, 2, 3 is actually a hijack movie. In which case, if I've got to recommend a heist movie, uh, I'd go for Inside Man. I think it's terrific. Again, characterisation is great. If it comes on ITV4, I have to watch it. It's bro. Uh, any road. If you've got any requests for future reviews, drop me a line. And uh, click on the old like button and subscribe and share it with your mates and all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Okie do. Oh, it's cakey treats for Raymond.